So we'll probably get to part of this today. Wherever we leave off, we'll pick up with tomorrow, okay? So in this section, we're going to take a look at expressions and just simplifications. This is really another very simple section that you should be familiar with. Um, so let's, let's just press right into it, okay? Let's start with some definitions right off the bat. Expression is different than equation. Please, 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 make sure you recognize that. So many students use the word equa words equation and expression interchangeably. They're not the same. Just like the word function is not the same as equation, actually. If you set a function equal to zero, well, then you get an equation, but they're not actually the same thing. So a numerical expression is a symbol or group of symbols used to simply represent a number. So an expression could be something such as x plus y. That's an expression. That's completely fine. Okay, but if I suddenly have an equal sign in, it's no longer an expression. So that itself could be considered an expression. I could even have something where I'm operating in, in, within an equation and call part of it an expression, like 8 minus 2. Okay, that itself is an expression, which just represents the number 6, obviously. Um, the second part, value. Value. It's the number that's represented by the expression. So, for example, the expression 3 times 5 has a value of 15. The expression 3 times 5 has a value of 15. Uh, equation, ready? Here's what an equation actually is in math. It's an expression that equals another expression. That's all it is. Any equation is, you know what, you got something on the right-hand side, that's an expression, and that equals something that's an expression on the left-hand side. That's the definition of an equation. Okay, you have an equal sign between them. And opposing that, opposing an equation, is an inequality, using an inequality symbol. Okay, and we already saw these with our number line a little while ago. So if I were to write, let's see, for an equation, I could write something like this. 4 times 7, well, that's equivalent to 30 minus 2. Or that's equivalent to 20, whatever it is. But that would be like an equation. But another equation that we're going to see involves variables, 2x equals 115. That's an equation. The expression 2x is equal to the expression 115. For an inequality, we use the inequality symbols. I'm going to sneeze. Uh. <coughs> Thank you. Um, so we use inequality symbols. Okay. What does a greater than or equal to differ from a greater than symbol? How do I explain that in terms? Yeah. Correct. So depending on if that symbol is, I have a greater than there, sorry. Greater than or equal to 5. In this case, x could be 5 or any number bigger than 5. But in this case, x is just every number bigger than 5. Those are very different things. You're going to see this distinction a lot in your further or more advanced courses for sure. Where endpoints are included in the solution and graphs have points that are included for discontinuities. You'll see there's a lot of pre calculus. An inequality is simply that statement written that way. So for example, we wrote this earlier, like 11 is greater than or equal to 2x. There's an inequality, okay, which I can solve by dividing both sides by 2. First one, real simple, fill in the blank, fill in the blank. This is like, this could be probably the easiest level question you would ever see on like an SAT, but even that, it might even be too easy for that. Actually, for the regular SAT, this could be like easy level, actually. But if you take the SAT subject test later, those are a little bit trickier. So looking at this, I got 27 over 3 plus 4. Is that greater than, equal to, or less than 4 squared minus 5? Step me through it. I know you got the answer. Moro, step me through it. Go ahead. So if you solve, if you solve the one on the left of the blank first, it's 9, 9 is 27 divided by 3. Mm -hmm. Very good. And the other side is the square root of 4, which is uh, no, square, square. square. It's 16 minus 5 is 11, so it's greater than. Very good. Okay, just make sure that your operations are done properly. Make sure your operations are done in the correct order. Um, we're going to go into PEMDAS real quick at one point, okay? Questions on this? Yeah? Good. And I'm hoping this stuff's reviewed. That's why I'm going through it nice and quick. We need to know our terminology again, all right? Keep working. Vocabulary is important. The word sum in math does not mean a few of them. Like, oh, I got some money. No, sum, the S-U-M. Okay, 
the sum is the addition of two quantities, when you're simply adding terms together. The difference between two things is subtraction. The product is multiplication, and for division, we use the word quotient. Okay, for division, we use the word quotient. Um, the other terms are very important. Power, okay, the product as a real, as a result, sorry, of equal factors. We'll get into this next section, okay? We're talking about the word power. That's where we left off, okay? A power is simply the product as a result of equal factors. As a result of equal factors. So, for example, x times x times x, right? That's a power. You would write it as x to the third. The 3 is not necessarily called the power. The 3 is called the exponent. The x itself is called the base. So it's easy to use an example for this, okay? Anything that could be written as a power is when you see multiple factors that are the same. That's all power is defined as. The exponent itself is whatever you see as a, sub, as a superscript, the three. The base is what you would think. Think of base as bottom. The base of a building is the bottom of a building. The base is the actual variable or whatever this term is uh, that continues to occur several times. Questions? You should know that vocabulary, right? You've all seen this? Okay, good. Substitution principle, you've done this many times. Whether or not you realize what you've done along the way, you've done it. If two things are equivalent, you can substitute them for one another. How many of you like to cook? Anybody like to cook or bake? Anyone like to bake? I, I personally do. I love cooking and baking both. If, if, you, if you say you're missing, I don't know, sugar. It's a good substitute for sugar, actually. You can use instead. Or if you're missing something like oil, you can look it up online and find a substitution for that food category. It's the same thing in math. If I have substitution principle that I'm using, I could say y equals 2x plus 5. And then I have another equation with y, I can plug in 2x, per 2x plus 5 in for y in that other equation. So when things are equivalent, they can be replaced by one another. That's all we're saying here. When things are equivalent, they can be replaced with their equivalent expression. Um, we're only defining these simply because of the fact that we're going to use these principles inherently throughout the year. Uh, operations, we know these already, we've learned them all. What's the only thing that you kind of have to remember with this? I'm not going to go through everything. What do you have to remember with PEMDAS? Is one little trick, one little caveat, if you will? I think it was that, like, whichever, for multiplication, division, and addition and subtraction, whichever comes first in the expression or equation, you have to do first. Very good. That's exactly right, from left to right. So multiplication and division are grouped together, just like addition and subtraction are grouped together. And you always work from left to right, from left to right. We're going to do an example in a minute to show this, but I want to make sure that's clear. Aside from that, you go parentheses and exponents. By the way, absolute value is the same thing as parentheses. Absolute value occurs first. Okay? Absolute value, what have you seen inside here? You operate on that first, as if it's a parentheses. Um, So take a look at this one quickly. On your own, tell me what you're getting. Um, you can come up with the answer, but I'm going to press you through the steps one at a time for this also. I'm assuming we're done a couple. I see eyes looking up. You want to try an airplane? Put yours up. See if it works. Oh, I didn't. I don't know. You what? I didn't oh, you know. Do you have it on your page? Do, do you, is it right? Try an airplane. See if it works.
Okay, hold on. That's me. So I didn't know if I had to. So I used to have it so that I had the old IT guy make it so I didn't have to get all first. So how about that? Is it clear? So Regina's going to share her solution. This is, I like this, so instead of getting up and going on the board, you know, you used to do that stuff in class. So just tap your screen twice so it gets rid of it. So take a look at Regina's solution, please. Okay, so we've got 3 squared first. Why? Because the 5 minus 2 there gets worked on first. It's in parentheses. So that becomes simply a 3. Then we're, I'm sorry, cube. Then we're going to cube that, which makes it a 27. After that, we can see that we're going to look between, we have division here and multiplication over here. And we do the division first because it occurs first, not right? left to right. So divide first and carry that down. Then here, you can multiply these two values. 3 times 6 is 18. Go ahead and do that. Then you see subtraction occurs first. 3 minus 18 is negative 15. And then add 12 to make it negative 3. Okay, this is absolutely the correct way to do it. All right? Okay, I'm going to steal it back from you. And see if I can actually override yours if you don't have to get off. No, you have to get off, go ahead. That's annoying. I gotta fix that, I'll fix it next year. Just a turn off, there you go. I'll fix it next class, not next year, so. Come on. All right. So let's take a look at the next thing, please. So first, the definition of the term variable. What do you think a variable is? When you're a variable, what do you think? Yeah, exactly. A left, you use the word left, a letter, and anything, right? A symbol that takes the place of an unknown number. Something that we don't know the value of. Okay, something we don't know the value of. We usually call that the domain of that variable. The domain, like x. We'll get into more of that in a little. So let's take a look at this. Evaluate the expression if the following are given. This is really quite simple. Using substitution principle, right? You notice that's what you're doing here. Whether or not it's, it clicks in your head, this is substitution principle. You're substituting in the known values for the given variables. Take a look up, please, and make sure you got yours right. That's how much time it should have taken. I explained it. I walked over to the podium. I hesitated. I accidentally almost canceled this program. And then I started writing it all and finished it. You should be done by about now at this point. This could be the only part that's tricky. I can see is a common denominator. But your driver's math course, common denominators should be like the second nature of this way. Okay, the common denominator is clearly 6 in this case. Take a look at my approach, please. If there's anything you have different, please make note of it. Please make note of it. And again, for those that are really good with their arithmetic, you don't have to show every single step along the way. You're going to see throughout the year, I'm the kind of person who, trust me, I'll know if you know how to do it in your head. When you need to show work, though, show the work. Okay, and there are times where you definitely have to, so don't just put nothing down and try and come up with it. How about this one? This is pretty interesting. I find this to be a cool open-ended problem. There are multiple answers. So just raise your hand when you get an answer. There could be, I can, I can think of probably up to like five to ten answers for this already. So using five twos, five twos, the number two, write an expression whose value is seven. So like two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two would be ten, right? So two plus two plus two plus two plus two, plus two will work. You know what I'm already? I know. Yeah. You can do whatever you want with the four operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Or you could raise it to a power. Or you could do whatever. No, it could be like 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 22. I know that's a Oh, that's interesting. I guess you could, but it's not I, I mean, try it. If it does help, actually. No, no, it might, actually. No, it will. Can it will. You can. I know. Yeah. Do you use the 22 on That's cool. I'm very interested. I like that. You can do powers. Sure. 2 looks like a power. But it happens to be that 2 times 2 is the same. And 2 plus 2 is the same. So there's so many variations for this answer simply because 2 times 2, 2 to the second, and 2 plus 2 are all 4. So you're going to see a lot of that. That's why I chose 2s for this. Give me one as soon as you got it. Yeah, go. Francisco. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 over 10. Very good. Agreed. That is 7 indeed. It's 6 plus 1, right? Which is 7, and there's 5 twos used there. Let's 
try to think of another way to come up with the number seven. Think of a different operation, Regina. It works, though. As soon as you get another one, raise your hand. Guys, there's a lot of these, so I expect you to come up with at least four or five. You have a whole class put worth of brains here. Like that? No. Um, subtract minus two and then put it all over two. That would be two times two is four. Four squared is 16. 16 minus two is 14. 14 over two is seven. That's a really creative one. I like it. Very good, Maura. Regina, go ahead. Ah, you can't use a four. You can use twos, right? I should have put using only five twos. Yeah, no other numbers, no other numbers. Good. Um, but it's creative, I like it. Good. Two squared plus two plus two over two. Yeah, I was waiting for people to say this. Like, this is the same thing as the first one, isn't it? And I, for the first one, I could also just do two times two plus two plus two over two. That works also. See how numbers one, three, and four are really the same thing? One, three, and four are all the same thing. So that those are pretty right on that. Regina, did you get the one with 22? Yeah, what is it? Go ahead. 22 over 2. Yeah. Plus two minus two. Good. Or you just put minus 2 plus 2. Same thing. Yep. Yeah? Very good. Or, you know what I mean? I just assumed what I said. She said, can I use 22? I said, yeah, sure, try it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then this is 11 minus 4, which is 7. That works also. Do you get the idea of what I'm saying here? Okay? So the only reason I need to do this question is because I like open-ended questions where there's multiple answers. It's very rare that it happens in that, right? Usually there's one answer to the question. But I want you guys to recognize, especially seeing as you're moving into like an accelerated course, there are going to be multiple answers. There should be multiple answers at times. And there's not always going to be one correct way to get to the right answer. Okay? So the paths you take may be a little bit different along the way. Anybody else got another one before we go on? All right. No big deal. Homework is listed. So MR stands for mixed review. Jot that down. You know what WDI already said? It's written exercises. Um, show of hands, did everybody, or did anybody not put the chapter one in either seat? Anybody not do that yet? Make sure to do that. It's in your Google Drive folder. So if you go to Google Drive right now and see it there, just open chapter one in iBooks. Once it's open in iBooks, delete it out of Google Drive, please. Okay, because it takes up a good amount of space and it's all, it mirrors on mine. You have the hard copies of this textbook. That's the only reason I'm allowed to like actually give you scans of them, by the way, copyright wise. You're actually allowed to, yeah. Because the school owns, we own like hundreds of copies of this book. It's legal to us, for us to scan it and actually send you chapters. Yeah, we looked into this before we did any of that kind of stuff because you guys know.